the thing I did not like about this, you know, every time you move your fingers along this thing, you're hearing that. So you'll sort of learn after, after a while to have this very relaxed, very static grip, which is fine if you're sitting still. But uh, on this trip, I spent a lot of time in the back seat of a minivan, the back back seat of a minivan. And it was a trip where my wife was going back to visit uh, a bunch of her childhood uh, places she lived as a child. And so she's telling all these stories and I'm trying to capture this stuff. And I'm in this moving car and, you know, there's just a certain amount of movement that's inevitable. And that was really kind of annoying. Along with, this is a stereo image. And every time you move, you know, you're hearing these voices rotate around your head. That's very disorienting. But bringing it down to mono wasn't bad. But it left me feeling like, really, there's a reason why interview mics tend to be omnis. Um, and for my application, I think an Omni would work better. So then I was thinking, what could I use for an Omni? Enter the Tascam DR-10X. This thing is pretty cheap. I think it's like $130. Runs on one AAA battery. Does not do phantom power. And it has very limited gain setting capability. It's pretty much a low, medium, high kind of thing. However, what it lacks in fancy features, it makes up for in size and simplicity. And the fact that I'm using a real microphone that's got some weight to it is an Omni. So it has inherently better wind resistance than a, a cardioid. And I can move my hand on this thing without it becoming this thundering roar in the recording. And uh, battery life is pretty good so far. I have not used this a great deal, but what I'm learning is 24-bit um, recording. I can set the gain. On this particular mic, this is an AT8010, uh, and it's got a fairly hot output, so this, is, this recorder is set to the lowest level, and I have the limiter on. And the limiter is just in case, you know, we walk by something that's kind of loud, like a street music thing or something like that. Really, the point of this is but to better capture, I'll say, in-car banter, walking around banter, things like that. Before I got the uh, DR-10X or the H1N, this, well, actually this, hold on, plus this is what I took on a trip to Maine. Now, on that trip, I was actually going for ambiances at a, several lighthouses that we saw and uh, some other places we visited. And so that's why I brought the BP4025 stereo microphone from Audio-Technica and a stand I can put it on, but even so with the pistol grip, most of the time you can just sit there. Um, so I was gonna bring this big stereo mic and so once you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. I brought this uh, 4022, AT4022. Uh, this is a Omni, favored by a lot of nature recordists because it's got pretty darn low noise uh, down in the region of the, the Sennheiser 8020. Um, and it's about 300 bucks, 350. I bought a used one for 200. Uh, ended up having to have it repaired by Audio Technica. Anyway, uh, so I used this for like in the car and other places. Um, this is a Rode WS9 that came with a um, video mic mini, video mic micro, I can't remember what, but it fits on this perfect and it actually works really, really well. I can use this mic in, I'd say probably up to 20, 25 miles an hour without too much trouble. All right, so uh, the Mix Pre 6 is living in a strut bag. I don't remember the model number of the strut bag, but it's basically a Cordura black nylon bag with Velcro openings on the ends, which you can open up like that, which you can see on the end here. Um, you can close the Velcro to kind of seal a little bit around the cables, and then there's these little zipper openings. Now you'll notice I've got the stereo cable uh, kind of looped and tucked into the belt loops, and that's so that most of the time when I'm not using the big mic, I can just keep the cable connected and it, it stores it pretty nicely and it's out of the way. Um, on the other side, I have a single mono cable going in 
and that's what I connect the Omni to. For power, I'm using a talent cell. This was 40 bucks on Amazon, and I'm sure every sound for film person that sees this is going to be having a mild myocardial infarction, but okay, this is not meant for like professional use. The life on this is, mm, I'll say all day for me, probably about six hours of continuous recording. Um, you've got a USB out if you happen to want to charge something. It comes with a little tiny wall wart that you can plug in to charge this thing. Came with this Y cable, so I put a uh, Hero C uh, connector on it to use with the, the sound devices uh, MX Hero C adapter. Um, I've used the USB blocks, USB ch chargers, um, and I don't like using those because here's the problem. They work fine. I mean, power-wise, they're, they're awesome. They do work. But the problem is, if you look at the end of this unit, okay, and you have something plugged in here that's tall, and the power switch is right here. And we all know that the power switch location on this recorder is, you know, the greatest mistake of the century. But the only way in is through this opening here. There's no way to get your finger around there. You can kind of sort of snake a finger in this way. It's crazy, though. So I just decided, no, I'm not going to use USB. Um, if I need it as a backup, I can. That leaves this port open for, you know, downloading to a computer or something like that. Um, but... I decided to go the external brick on the bottom way with the Hero C connector. And that has worked out actually very, very well. Um, I can charge this while I'm using it and it's not very heavy. And like I said, it was 40 bucks. It was, I don't know, a hundred bucks, I think for the, for the adapter plate and another 20 for the connector, which I will say soldering that connector on was not a lot of fun. So this outfit works really, really well. Um, I didn't think I would like this bag so much when I got it. I actually almost just sent it back. Um, but I have to say it actually works really quite well. I can lay this mic on top of here and fold this over the top. Okay. And now it's, it's, I won't say stealthy, but it's not super noticeable. And I can actually walk around this with walk around with this bag hanging off my shoulder and I don't get a ton of bag noise or a ton of clothing noise. And so for just capturing, you know, some ambiance, now granted it's a mono, but most of the time for what I do, mono is actually okay. So, um, on the main trip, I incidentally did not use the bright yellow cable. I have a shorter black cable that I was using, uh, in case you're wondering about that. The strap has a Peak Designs leash, uh, which I actually um, was one of those things where you're putting it in the cart and you see it's 40 bucks or whatever it is, and you kind of ask yourself, really, 40 bucks for a piece of nylon? But I have to say, this if you're going to spend 40 bucks on a piece of nylon, this is the piece of nylon to buy for 40 bucks. Uh, this works really well. In fact, I'm going to get some more of these little toggle things to put on my binoculars and some other things I own. So there you have it. I uh, don't know what kind of work you're doing, but for just casual sound gathering uh, like I do, this is actually a pretty sweet setup. Thanks for watching.